Welcome back everyone to the HWBot World Tour 2016 and we are here live from the Master Overclocking Arena and MSI OC Academy Final. We will have the Amateur Final right now and we will have Istep against Pika, the two amateurs that did qualify in the last few days and passed through uh, the semi-final to happen to be here. They will be fighting XTU 2 times 15 minutes. We add up the two scores for it to be fair to everyone. 15 minutes on one system, then they switch. I'm Truthman from Overclocking TV. This is Lee Gooft, and we will be commenting for you guys this match live. Let's check out with the judge if everything is fine. Timothy, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you, Truthman, and I'm ready with the guys final of this amateur uh, match i would say uh, the msi OC academy as you said and uh, the guys are ready to go um, they are on the desktop can you close this please and we are good to go just let me know if it's let's fine. go when you want all right is it prêt? three two one go 15 minutes and we're off they now have 15 minutes uh, to set the best score on one platform in XTU. This will make sure that uh, they uh, can get to the second step. They will have to get the same score, the best score on the other CPU, on the other uh, platform for them. So let's dig straight into it. No cooking show for now, no liquid nitrogen. Right after this one, we'll have the final for the Extreme Overclockers and finally the award ceremony. Jelly Goft, we do have two overclockers. The blue side is Pika, the red side is Eastip. Indeed, and like a, they didn't change the setup, I think, Truthman. So they're still working, in fact, on the similar setup as before, as in the semi final. So indeed, things what we see are already going up straight to 4.5 gigahertz. Cranking the Uncore up to 4.3, and the first run is in the making. Pika looks really, really, really nervous at this moment. I don't know if you can see it. It's like discussing a lot and, and also his body language also gives away like everybody wants to win, of course. No points for second best. Go for it. Uh, there's uh, actually a com almost a, a system, a complete system for, for the winner of this MSI OC Academy final. It will go back home with a motherboard, a PSU and uh, some uh, memory from Clev. Did you fall the crass one? I, I didn't walk around at, at the gamers assembly with the gamers itself, but usually gamers like work on an older platform. So for these guys, it's like a fun upgrade, of course. If you get already the motherboard, the memory, the PSU, and we are all like high-end components this time. So no problem for them. Just add a CPU and you're good to go. Then 85 points for um, a step as a first score. Uh, 1083 for for Pika that just submit uh, that just did 1083. There's 13 minutes left in this first leg of the final for the MSI OC Academy here at the HWBot World Tour. So pretty fun again, neck to neck, only a few points different. Let's see if they can pull off again the 1120 ish scores that they did before. So we need to see CPU speeds up to 4.6 gigahertz easily, maybe probably even matching the Encore speed. Runs again in the, in the making and like we said before in, in the semifinals and, and quarterfinals, you can try this at home. Do not do the extremes thing. You can, of course, do it, but for daily usage, this is like a great stability testing tool. Intel XTU, free downloadable from the Intel website. Nice thing about it is that is this a small, small increase, three points. And they're running again, slowly upping the B clock each time, and hopefully trying to improve their score. Oh, 11.02. It's getting better and better and better. Maybe they should do like, because it's the final, they should like do 11.30-ish, preferably, to really make it like, I'm a crown winner. But I really like the concept of the 1v1. It's too bad you can't really like see the screens, that they could really see each other's scores, but of course you can also look at the settings. I've been speaking in the microphone for nothing for the past two minutes. Great. Oh. I thought you like muted my, my input here, so that's why I didn't tell anything. 
So the two guys benching now um, head to head next to you. Estep is at 4.57 gigahertz. Both are 11.02. So we have the same as the the losers final, let's say, from the extreme guys. Like we're uh, matching the scores all over. And it was like a small mistake by the judge, I think. So in 11.02, 10.98. Estep at the moment are leading only four points over Pika. So anything can happen. And oh, blue screen from Pika, the blue team. The blue team is getting a blue screen. Have to restart the complete system. Yeah, well, Estep just can try to find again a higher... Oh, he's going way higher Pico than he did before. I think maybe he got some inside info, like uh, lower the B lower so the multiplier, higher the B clock to get like the same CPU speed and get hopefully better performance. And maybe between and the the semi-final that they did and this final, they had some uh, time to look on the internet as well. Ah, that's what it's all about. You have to know what you're doing. Eleven yeah. nineteen, nice. Eleven nineteen, quite good. Yeah, let's hope he can actually uh, go higher than what he have right now. The benchmark is still running. Um, thank you, Warcrow5381, for the follow. If you like what you're seeing, just follow us on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash overclocking TV. We are streaming live from the HWBot World Series final. This is the MSI OC Academy final. We'll be commenting here for the next 30 minutes. And yeah, that's going to be the extreme final. That one is the one that most viewers probably will be watching out for or looking out for to, to see the big clash between the two German guys. But at the moment, we're focusing on the amateur final. Estep versus Pika. Estep still in the lead and setting a new score, 11.25. I think that's the highest we've seen till now. 11.26 was the highest we I saw. I think it was 11.26 that we had. Yeah, so it's pretty, so pretty, again, pretty close. I have a very bad memory. It's like we said, <laughs> it's the fatigue, man. It's like... You're still a young guy. Imagine what this does to me. Not good. <laughs> so Pika and Estep benching XTU at the moment. Pika is at 4.5. Estep is at 4.69. Good advance for this. That explains the points difference between the two at the moment. But like said, indeed, they will swap setups and let's see if they can match again the scores from the previous session. It's always, always depending on, on how the OS still is in good shape or not because we have experienced this with uh, extreme overclocking if you have like a lot of continuous crashes at a certain moment the os can lose performance and you can no matter what you do you reach the same frequencies but the score is like 10 or 15 points off and there's not much. it's not yeah, it's not better it's actually better. Uh, decreasing in, uh, in points he needs to find something But it still gets like a motherboard and a power supply, I think. So that's yes. still. Oh, blue screen! <laughs> He's no, kinda it, smiling. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, mm, yes or no? I don't know. <laughs> but I think it's like really stressy. If like nothing is happening at your system, it's not working, you see the other guy, and, and you also hear the judge like announcing the scores. It's like. Dude, need to make the, work of the, this. The pressure is on. The pressure is on. As you, you are standing next to your your opponent, and you know exactly what he's doing. You know exactly what score is burning out in the wild. But yeah, there's no way for you to match it. This must be so. Ah, oh, you must be so pissed off. Yeah, it's really frustrating. I think at, at certain moments, especially if you know what what's at the end of the finish. If you can get like almost the the entire setup, or you get yeah, maybe just a motherboard at PSU. Anyway, still a cool prize just to have that for, let's say. 30 minutes of training and then like struggling through the qualifiers, pretty good. Because Pika was a little bit annoyed this morning because we, we didn't were on time and we, we, we opted to go straight for the extreme overclocking sessions. So he still managed to do to get in the final, which is quite cool. 11.25, 10.98. He understood that if he increase the 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 multiplier for the fourth core is actually increasing for all of them, so he doesn't have yeah. to do it all the time. So that's actually quite clever to uh, to win some time as well. We had a crash on his step. Okay. I think he thought he killed the setup. 
but it's still running. It's still trying and to boot anyway. This is about the OS only because, uh, as we were explaining before in the previous semi-final, um, there was more than 400 people that did took the workshop over the past uh, for this year and last year, and none of the hardware ever broke. Like none of the hardware ever broke. Of course, the OS get corrupt at some point, but this is completely harmless for the hardware because it's just mm -hmm. a software you just have to reinstall. Let's just see if the system comes up, otherwise we have the first hardware failure ever. Ah, it's there. So, all good. <laughs> We're ready to go again. Timothy loaded the optimized defaults. It will reboot and go into the windows again, hopefully. He's like really enjoying it, enjoying the music. Doing his little cheer dance, or victory dance already. Let's see what Pika can pull out now, out of his sleeve. 1098 is previous score. Let's see if he can match 1125. He's a little bit low on, on CPU frequency. 1093. 1093. Not improving his score at all. So going There's up to five four points. minutes left. Five minutes out of the 15 that is left. E step is also again in the windows. XTU is recovering, probably giving an error message. He just has to click it away and he's good to go again. Uh, but it, you were not stable before. Do you want to try again? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Insert coin, try again. And the only choice is okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, blue screen! He's going to have nightmares, I think, about you. <laughs> <laughs> he will not add you as a face on face, a friend on Facebook, I think. He'll like, be like. I love and that's this. how it goes. Yeah, I know yeah. you like it. You have been doing this how many years already, Truth? Oh, I can't stop counting. I think I spent half of my life doing this. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, yeah. See, he's applying the multiplier one by one. one, by so one. You, don't, you don't know that if you just put that to the fourth core, it will activate all the others as well. Same as reducing the first one, it will reduce all of them at once. Yeah. I was running the benchmark. Pika is not. He's just, just getting back into the, the desktop, uh, so Istep has some advantage right now. But 4.7 is like, I think, the highest we saw till now, no? For the amateur, yeah, that's the, the highest uh, we have ever seen. And you see, still, like that. There's no terminal throttling, nothing, so there's yeah. still some room left. Oh, well, there's much room left, I think. I think 4.8 might be easily doable. Oh, oh. blue screen! Just crank up the volts, guys. Come on. You can do it. Really too conservative. Back to Pika. Trying to go for 4.56 gigahertz. Yeah. Close. <laughs> I think it must be hard for them just to watch the, the benchmark because this is one of the things which, which, which maybe not Interesting for the spectators, because you don't see anything moving besides our little blue spinning wheels with XTU. And we have the monitoring for the temperature. That yeah, does, that's that does actually give us an idea of where they are in the benchmark and how a performance. We don't have any idea about the performance itself before it's the end, yeah. but we know if it's going well or not. So passing 2 minutes 30 from the end, then they will swap seats and try to rerun on the other setup and try to improve their score. At the moment, E-Step in a quite comfortable lead, so Pika still has to breach 1100. 1125, can he improve? They are all using the MSI Gaming Pro Carbon Z170A, using the core i5-6600K. Pika new score 1102, 02. improving his score. This is quite important because the next round they're gonna have to uh, match out or beat their uh, opponent. And because we do add up the two score to make the final ranking for that. So any any points taken is uh, always good. Indeed. Any point counts in these kind of competitions is like really fun. I think Estep did like uh, also an 11 20 -ish score on that setup where Pika's own at this moment. So it should be possible. Anything is possible. And they are uh, using the Seasonic P760. What? Did, like we said. Platinum edition, like we said, a pretty solid PSU. If the guy can do extreme high clocks on LM2, perfectly fine for your daily gaming setup. 
And we're using the Clef memory, the Crass, the TD-041. Uh, Clef is uh, brand new to this uh, overclocking crowd. It's a Korean mm. brand and uh, it's actually a, a quite young brand as well. So it's quite good that they want to use, let's say, our community to get some extra exposure in them. Indeed. Thanks for that. Ah, soon to have the benchmark, yeah. but this won't happen because it just broke. And there is 50 seconds, 50 seconds left. Blue screen! Sorry for your ears if you had a heads uh, here, plugs. I think Roman will never do the, the common thing on the amateur final with you. <laughs> <laughs> he will never ever do that. <laughs> So 23 points lead, still for e -step. We He's have the communication for... with the judges, 25 seconds left. 1-1-2-1. Uh, one, one, 20 seconds left. 20 seconds. 15. 15. 10. 10. 10. 10. 9. 8. 7. 6. 5. 4. 3. 2. Ah, décollage! Bravo! So, Eastap claiming the victory in the first segment of this final. Systems will be reset to default, all profiles will be removed, all scores, and then rebooted again, and then we go for the second round. Second round will feature the exact same benchmark, the exact same system, and the exact same rule that will just switch. The, uh, the seats for them to have the exact same chance at winning this competition. That's really what makes it fair. That's really a good initiative and, and fun for us to see indeed that these guys can just really be so competitive. It's so tight. Okay, moving positions. Let's switching, go, guys. Switching position now. So they know, they have an idea about the score that their opponent did on the same system. Yeah, absolutely. So we know that Pika have like 23 points, is lacking 23 points against his step. So that means if his step is doing the same score at Pika on the, on the platform, Pika have to do 23 points more than that score, no matter what. No matter what. Otherwise, it's out. Indeed, so the pressure is again on his shoulders now. So he needs to at least match his previous score that he did like in the semi-final. And even more, even more. He just has to also take into consideration what e -step can do on the platform that e Pika was just on. And we are ready for the next one, Timothy. It's yes. whenever you want to go. Okay, guys, are you ready? Yes? Okay. Three, two, one, go! Off for 15 minutes. They have, as you heard, 15 minutes to set the best core in XTU. Let's go see where they're going straight to the small settings. Both adjusting reference clock right now. They know already that platform from the semi-final. So if they remember correctly, none of them took notes, but if they remember correctly, they can maybe remember what was the exact frequency they were using. Yeah, but I think that this was the difference that we saw with the amateur final from last year. Like we said, they took notes. They had like something to fall back on and, and oh. oh we got the first blue screen not even 40 seconds in the second leg of the match well he didn't adjust the v-core he just set all the clocks but he didn't change the v-core so that's the thing that can happen like in these live competitions that you just overlook a small detail <laughs> yeah probably they're, they're blaming the setup or whatever but usually it's end users to blame uh, problem exists between keyboard and chair Ah, that's it indeed. So Eastap running. 11.25, you can straight match like uh, 10.80-ish. Is way, he has already placed its placeholder and the other one still has to do something. Already like 1 minute 30 left. Already done. Close to 13 minutes to go. Pika's up and running again and adjusting. Score from Eastep, 1066. That's a very low score. That's one of the low ones we had. But it's at 4.2 gigahertz. That's the yep. placeholder. This is actually something that is good for them to do because at least you have points. And this is based out of points. Hmm. So any points is good to take. That's what we were saying just before. Is like 
even if you gain two points, it's still two that you can have and that yeah, you're open that, enough a, to, oh, to go crush on that's also the question you asked, like, what's the, 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 the tactics? How do you approach this? And we say always any score is better than no score. So you have to have something in reference. And that's also why, for example, Zazolio qualified because he was about to give up because he said, I can't match these guys in memory timings and whatever. But, okay, do it anyway. And finally he ended up, okay, he was the winner now of the, the bronze final, as we call it, but at least he was there. If he just hey, gave he's in... Going he's going back home with like a thousand USD and almost a complete system. Okay. Pretty cool. Both setups are running. Let's see what gives. If Pika can finish this run. But he needs huge scores. He needs to have good scores to get... to grab the victory. Pika, yes, you can have it. You can have it at 4.58 gigahertz. You will have a nice lead. 11, 15, 11, 15. Nice lead. Nice lead for that. I still have a lot of points to catch up on his uh, opponent, but so far that's uh, a good enough advance for him to be in the in the lead. Indeed, but it takes a lead at this moment, you see. So Eastep is now the guy who needs to get it shifting into gear and, and beat the score. 10.92. So we change again. Step. Yeah. And it's a whole new ball game again. See that uh, Pika is going to restart the system. Maybe it doesn't feel... Uh, maybe it doesn't feel that it's uh, completely going okay. Isn't that cool? Total score 2217. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That's what we want to see. It's tight. That's super 20, tight. 2217 20, for both participants. <laughs> Even Massman couldn't have dreamt that. He can dream a lot, but not this. This is like really super tight. Also, the final for the extreme guys was like, wow. This they one versus one match are so tight all the time. It's it's crazy. But it's the same for gaming. Have you ever gamed like first person shooters or something? If you yeah. go one v one, that puts like a lot of stress on you. If you were like in a team, you can still rely on your teammates to do something, but you're completely on your own now. So now it will be who grabs those little, little futile points and, and will grab so the win. Can you do better than 1092? That's all you have to do for now. I think so. Looking at the the frequencies is running like it should be like 1100-ish again. 4.55 gigahertz. What's the score? 1102. 11 that's it. Now Estep, Estep is going back in the lead. He had the lead in the first leg of this match and he's now back in there. That's going to be quite hard for Pika to catch up with it. He's already over him in terms of score for this specific round. But at this very moment, they all did the exact same score on the same machine. So yep. Pika did 1102 the, the, the leg before and Estep is using the same machine as Pika just before. But in five minutes, he managed to do the best score. The score. Indeed. True. So Pika leads at least, at least 11 points. Unless Eastap also still improves. And I think he can because he did it before. He can improve. He's going like slowly but steadily, 4.56. 22, 27 versus 22, 1, 7. 10 points difference to go home with the gold or with the... Running, Pika's rebooting. Always makes you lose time. Less than 10 minutes to go. At this very moment, Pika have to do more than 11.25 to no, to have a, a chance to uh, to go in there. And that's only if Eastep doesn't manage to put any better score than that. He, Something he that we'll soon see. Eastep is like more in a comfortable position. He did like very well in the first run, like almost getting like the highest score that we have seen today. So Pika, yeah. 1100, uh, still not okay. good enough. But this is getting there, he's close. So now he's just pushing to uh, a little higher for the multiplier. Processor oh, cache ratio, core voltage increasing oh. that one to 128. They're changing a lot of settings at once. So they will never know which one is the one that crashed. Yeah, yeah. indeed. And that's something also that everybody does. Like if you're like busy with overclock, just change one thing at a time. So you can always analyze it was that thing. Before it worked fine, now I changed this, so I need to do something else to fix it. I think he went a little bit bog wild and he increased the multiplier, B clock, and just gave like a small nudge to the to the core voltage. Oh like, we got a blue screen. The 
blue screen from the blue team. There's less than eight minutes left in this MSI OC Academy final. We have to watch what, what he does in fact. The before he also applied, but he didn't change the voltage. So indeed the CPU gets like a way too high frequency boost. But if you don't change the voltage, it's like you can't run your car without fuel, can you? Yeah, you can yeah. try, but you won't go far. Downhill, yeah, it will go. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we said, this 1v1. People are watching you. People are streaming. There's like a lot of background noise. And they're closing in. So Pika did 11.15. Less than 10 points. Come on. 22.27 for a step. 22.17. Uh, 22.17 yeah, for Pika. Yeah. If that was trying to apply some settings and just crash, so you had to restart. On the other hand, Pika is pushing everything to the max this system can take. 4.4. And up the B clock now. Come on. More volts. Look, he does apply. It doesn't change the V core. Maybe that's the issue. Uh, maybe that's his issue. See if there is any uh, stability issue for that. He is benching at 4.56 right now. That's a pretty good CPU if you can do XTU at those crazy low volts. Because we've been like CPUs like. 4.5 Cinebench, so a, a benchmark which is not even this stressful, and we can go maybe just below 1.2 volts. So if you can run XTU, it can easily do Cinebench. So probably some overclockers might buy want to buy the CPU, <laughs> <laughs> even after all the torture that it, it had today. <laughs> but this should be a good score, I think. 4.56. Uncore is not that high, but he will close in, I think, again on E-step. A step pushing it, trying to raise the, the reference lock. On the other side, we have Pika, soon to have a score. This should work. Yeah. 11 13. Ah. 11 13, still two points less than what he had before. Uh, but he's close. That, that's a good, uh, that's a good um, indication for him that he can still push a little bit more on that. Especially on the multiplier, because it was not that high. It was like 4.57, so it still have yeah. margin for it. Still went up and didn't change anything to the V core, and it's still running. So pretty impressed with that. Proves me all wrong. We have all been doing it wrong. No need for voltage. Just, <laughs> just go higher. So the two overclockers side by side, e step against Pika. They're trying to define who would be the MSI OC Academy champion here at the Edge of Robot World Series 2016. We are at the Gamers Assembly in Poitiers. That's the biggest, uh, that's the biggest LAN party you can have in France. And it's, this event is awesome. Have you got an idea about how many gamers are like present here? I don't know. Is it like I think Dreamhack? It's, I think it's 1800. Oh, okay. Still quite good. But it's a it's a really nice concept, in fact, with the two gaming halls, console and, and PC and, and all the competitions. And it's not that far for us either, so... Yeah. Almost so finished. Yeah, so the scores, 11.08 for a step. Uh, so 6.0 so six point point and 11.18. So that's 3 points more for Pika as well. So they're both increasing their score at exactly the same time. This is tied because they bench right together at the exact same time. Eight. Still, Pika is lacking some point behind. But you have his chance. There's still 4 minutes in this final of the MSI OC Academy. Editing can happen. Like you saw in the end as well with the, with the extreme. It can happen like in the final seconds. If the setup runs and it's stable enough, it will speaking give an of, output. Speaking of every second count, especially if you're in Super Pi or W Prime, every second counts. That it's can make a lot of difference. It's even milliseconds. In those yeah, yeah, actually even milliseconds count. So 22.33 for E-Step, 22.20 for Pika. 13 points, the difference between getting a lot of hardware or just having the motherboard and the PSU, but still, anyway, nice prices. Both guys running, slowly increasing. So at the moment, Pika is pushing it a little bit harder than E-Step. Slowly but steadily. Slowly but steadily, but getting there. Would be so, nice if they could beat that best score that they did even in the semi-finals. 
11.05. Uh, back to the score he had just before. Oh, oh blue screen from Pika. He's quite used to blue screen on this uh, <laughs> on this final. He looked at us and he says, like, I have no uh, idea, no why. idea what, ha why, what happened. What the hell happened? So nothing changes at the moment. Pika has to reboot. Losing time. There's only 13 points different between them. Oh. Yeah. E-step changes a few stuff and it crashed like straight away. So 4.61 I Blue think Blue screen! <laughs> <laughs> Can't see that the guys are actually enjoying that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's see if the extreme guys can also handle that if we do that with them. <laughs> yeah, but they don't forget they have LN2 and Torch. <laughs> oh. But they're like ready, they're like walking around. They really want to jump into the action as well. Come on, Pika. Show us your stuff, man. Come on, you can do it. Pika's car? Pika's car? Pika's car. Yeah, it's, it's like changing almost like all the settings at once. Either he knows exactly what the settings is doing, or he just wants to push as much as he can for for the I'm, last I'm minute and 30 seconds. I'm still amazed he doesn't touch the V-Corn. It's like, come on. There might be that little bit extra. So PK is benching at 4.58. At 1.24 V-Corn, which is like pretty solid CPU. He cannot complain he had a bad CPU anyway. Because that's usually what, what, what overclockers do if they didn't get like, yeah, the CPU was bad, the memory was not good, and we always complain, but sometimes we you forget settings. Yeah, just be happy. One minute left, less than one minute left in this final for the MSI OC Academy. We'll know who is the champion here in Europe for that. Still no change in the scores, 22-33 versus 20-20. 40 seconds left. 40 seconds. Judge preparing to call. 34 seconds. Oh, setup still running. Let's see. We can now slightly higher than before. 4, 5, 8. Can he pull it off? Can he make 10 it seconds, 9, 8, 7. It will be a photo finish, I think, Truth, because we only have like 8 points difference, so... And it's over, so the two benchmarks are still valid. Let's see which are the benchmarks for the scores. Not over Can yet. Can they improve their scores? Can they improve their scores at the very last minutes? So, E-Step will be the first one to have the score. Need to do better than 11.08. 11.02, so it's not improving his score. Uh, he's still in the lead, but something can happen with Pika. Soon the score is at 4.56. 11.16, uh, sadly enough, he didn't uh, completely add it. So here we have the MSI OC Academy 2016 in Europe. The winner is Mr. Estep. Congratulations. An amateur that did not knew a lot about overclocking just 48 hours ago is now crowned the champion of the MSIOC Academy here at the Edge of Robot World Tour 2016. Congratulations to them. It was uh, extremely tight for, uh, for for this competition, Albert. Yeah, um, indeed. It's, it's, a, it's super fun to see this amateur turning into competitive overclockers as well. And they know they, they can surprise us as well. Like. Some of yeah. them have different way of doing it, even if the teacher had the same uh, requ recommendation on how to teach the people. Some of them had, no, some of them went for uh, the b the base clock. Some of them went for the multiplier first. Um, yeah, that's 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 actually a fancy. Uh, Albert, out of these amateur that we saw today, do you think that some of them will turn out like Orion Twenty Four that we saw in the uh, in the bronze final for the uh, for the extreme for the MOA uh, will turn into uh, extreme overclockers later on? That would be exceptional again if, if they can pull it off, in fact, because with, with Orion 24, they had like a lot of overclockers. And I think it happened the same at ROG camp last year in Germany. And we saw Raccoon here and Van Butt, I think the, yep. the name was. 
they, they were also almost qualified for the let's say the, the last eight to participate so anything can happen it, it just depends like how much they love hardware because as an overclocker even though you torture your hardware with extreme cooling and, and, and high voltages you still have like sort of respect for the hardware and how, how it all works and, and how you need to dial it in so let's hope I, really france has like a really strong overclocking community maybe they can they can get in touch with the guys from Kokotland or, or oc clan who knows we will see at hw bot We'll see next year because that's what happened last year. Audio 24 was one of the amateur and it turned out to be extreme this year. That was extremely crazy. It's super fun to see these guys that have, you know, we trained them for 30 minutes. They try by themselves for 30 minutes after that and they end up in these competitions. And they knew just yesterday, uh, yesterday evening, qu actually quite late in the evening, if they were qualified to come back today again and spend the day with us uh, with yeah. us here. Well, it's quite perfect. It's also the thing that you still, like we said before, we still have to do it in front of an audience and also wanting to do it. Some people just watch it, they say, ah, oh, it's not for me. And they just walk away and these guys like, they jump in and just try it out. And that's what makes it fun, of course. And now they go home with a little bit more hardware. Always fun. And, and as you guys can see, the extreme guys are preparing for the final, the final of the Master Overclocking Arena 2016 here at the HWBot World Tour. 2016 in Europe. We'll take a short break and uh, we'll come right after the, the grand final will happen in the next few minutes because we have to go uh, quite fast because some of the guys have to catch up their train actually. Yeah, we're running a bit behind schedule but indeed some people need to catch a train or a flight or whatever and that's how things go. Usually in live events nothing goes like 100% as planned. Time schedules are approximately there. Just to have an idea what will be going on but you can't find it like exactly on the minute. Indeed, see you guys soon for the final of the Master of the King of 2016 here at the Game Rest Assembly.